make any much of a difference between saturation and vibrance. Um, it's actually a bit more subtle overall, it would appear. Um, well, also, it only goes to 50, whereas saturation goes, saturation goes to 100. Uh, but in general, as you undoubtedly know, uh, vibrance is essentially saturation minus the skin tone. So if you had a picture of people, you absolutely want to use the vibrance, uh, not saturation. Saturating people is terrible. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, but here we don't have any people to worry about, so saturation, we are free and clear to use that. So I'm going to reset vibrance, reset vibrance, and take saturation up a little bit. Not too far, but up a little bit. How about out there? Okay. Then you've got under there white balance. So, and again, nothing unusual about this. So white balance as we have it. Actually, kind of like a slightly cooler look on there, maybe. Shadows and highlights in there. So you can do a little shadow lifting. So you want to pull some shadows up on there. Or you've got your highlight recovery. If you need to pull some highlights down. Actually, ooh, that looks, that's pretty good. Look at this. Okay, watch this part of the sky. Let me zoom into this here. Allow me to reset highlights. And okay, that's all done. So look at this area right here. That's pretty good. It pulled in some nice color in there. Very nice. All right, we're definitely leaving that in there. Slick, very good. Detail refinement, if you want to uh, really crank up the detail in there so we can you know, amount. This is more, what's it called? Um, the localized contrast is kind of, it's, it's a bit, it seems to be a different algorithm than the local contrast in there but it's just really pumping up that detail. So if you really wanted to crank it up, you can do that as well. Again, I am going to just leave that off. And then my favorite always is curves. I tend to really, really like doing stuff in curves. I think it's a, I think it's a very effective way to add your contrast into the image that you might want in there. Make those highlights, make the whole scene a little bit brighter up in the top, but I still got my highlights in there looking good. Now, I mentioned in the beginning that I was watching some of the Affinity kind of official videos about it. They, the guy who's doing the, the tutorials, which I think might have been Ash, I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to show you a technique that he, he really likes. I, I'm not sure that I like it, but I'm going to share it with you because I've never seen anything like it before. Uh, it seemed to be quite interesting. But let's see what you guys think. So he says what he likes to do, let me reset curves in there. What he often does is he'll go to black point and lower that way down to make it really flat and then go into curves and pull the contrast back into the curves. I'm not quite sure the benefit of that. I, I think it's just, it's a look that maybe he particularly likes, but it's something to consider. Again, I'm only showing that to you because he did and I figured it's worth sharing, um, but I, I'm not a fan of it. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reset my black point back where it was and add my contrast down just a little bit in the curves and there, just bring the highlights back up. A little bit of a nose curve. I almost always like adding a little bit of an S-curve in there. Okay, so this is pretty good. Um, overall, I think this is a nice balance on the image, but let's let's see if we can get some of that crazy contrast into this area that we were working with before. Because, uh, I'm sorry, that we saw before when I was playing with the presets, because I really liked the way that, sh that showed up in there. So to do that, we're gonna take advantage of overlays. So you'll remember from the all the other training before, Overlays is kind of like layers, except that you are taking a, essentially a copy of your image and redoing all the adjustments just in that overlay. And that overlay can be brushed in or be drawn in from uh, using um, gradient tools. Hello, Linus from Lithuania. Thank you for joining us today. So, and remember guys, if you have questions, pop them in there, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so let's play with overlays a little bit, shall we? Let's see what we can do in here. I'm going to, what do I wanna do? I want to do something on this area here. So I need a brush. I'm gonna grab the brush overlay and I can change the size of that with the bracket tools. And uh, let's see, up here at the top, you've got your controls, your size and hardness controls. I want a really soft tool. So I'm gonna go 0% hardness and I'm just gonna start brushing in. And you see, you get a, uh, 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 what do you call it? A mask overlay, mask preview, just so you can see where it's where it's gonna be brushed in. But keep in mind, I. I have no effect yet, right? I'm not actually brushing in an effect. All I'm doing right now is brushing in the mask on there. I'm gonna make this a bit, uh, bit bigger and just kind of brush in a little bit more in here. Just trying to get some of those edges in there. I am using, as you undoubtedly saw, a tablet here. It allows me to get a little bit more precision, a little more precise with the brushing. It's pressure sensitive and all that good stuff. Um, you can do it with a mouse, of course, but a lot harder and even harder with the trackpad. So the pen is really, really good for that. 
a little bit, oops, that's a bit too much. Let me undo that. Let's undo that and bring this brush a little bit smaller and start just brushing it. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash members. <laughs>